drafts, the strongest, tallest, and heaviest of our incredible equines. My name is Alyssa, and I am on a quest to ride every breed. I would like to invite you to join me on an adventure around the world as we meet a few of the breeds that have earned themselves the nickname Gentle Giants. Our journey starts in England, home of the Shire Horse. We're heading to a traditional farm. A place where time seems to stand still, old traditions are kept alive, and of course, a place where you are immediately surrounded by animals. I, I loved horses as a child um, and through my life, but never really got involved with them um, during my 20s and 30s, too busy trying to earn money and stay alive. Um, despite riding a motorbike, I managed it. Um, and then the time was right, I had the facility, I had the time, I had the space, and so I went out and got a 15-month-old Shire horse. And uh, one horse has turned into four, and with lots of carriages and carts and horse-drawn agricultural equipment, and uh, um, I've never been happier. Oh, here's the two youngsters. Oh my goodness. Now these two are same age within a couple of weeks and they're half brothers, same stallion, different um, mares. And um, um, one I got um, in just over 12 months ago and the other one arrived about six weeks ago. <gasps> and I rescued him. Oh wow. Well, a friend rescued him and uh, knowing that I'd buy him because oh. they look almost identical. Oh. Boss, Lewis. Come on, boys. We offer Shire Horse experiences where it's you that works the horse, not me. Um, uh, to start with, I show you, and then we bring you on, and it either leads towards uh, driving a Shire Horse in a two-wheeled cart, um, or operating farm machinery. It's, it's very hands-on and um, you get a feel of what it would have been like to work the land 100, 150 years ago. So for somebody that has not been around horses before, could they come and, and experience this? No problem at all. It's, it, it, even if you've never patted a horse before. This is Willem. One of the things, um, I, I, this was a trick an old a heavy horseman taught me is um, you, with the heavies, you never put the lead rope through. Mm. The, you, it's only a, a loop. Yep. And and I, I always put a brake on with this one, especially when you're two horses. You pull it all the way through. And I, do, I don't have to let go of it. Yep. <laughs> I have to stand on my tippy toes to reach the top. <laughs> there we go. See, you do have a back. And they have their roots back to the original war horse. If you actually think about it, the Shire horses, though they are much larger now than, say, 100 years or so ago, if you had 600 of them charging at you in close quarter, the fact that a chap with a pointy stick sitting on their back, well, that's the least of your problems. <laughs> and then they, then they, as military warfare progressed, they moved away from the front line, and that's when they started to turn to agriculture. In England, um, during the m medieval times and further on, most agriculture was worked, the land was worked by oxen. Oxen were used because the people believed the horses were of too expensive to feed and to keep compared to oxen. But what they then discovered with this surplus of large horses, being no longer in, being used in the military, in the army, they discovered that actually a horse can do so much more work in a day than an oxen, and it actually proved over the course of the year much cheaper. And so that's when the horse started to replace the oxen in the fields. And it was in the late 19th century 
that they we decided to rename them the Shire Horse because of the, they came from the Shires and um, they were all cart horses of a similar ilk but you had um, um, like from Cambridgeshire or Leicestershire or Lincolnshire um, and so they, they were given a new name, the Shire Horse and um, that's how we know them as of today. Good boy, <laughs> he's so soft. You see them moving and you know it's so much bigger, but when you're riding it, it's like just the whole way your body moves is so different. Good boy. Willem, trot. Oh my goodness, so much fun. Although this majestic breed once numbered over a million, their numbers dropped drastically and today they are a rare breed. I can totally see why people get hooked on draft horses. You are amazing. Yes, you are. You're so sweet. You're so much fun to ride. <laughs> the Owl Barn, a small apartment where people can stay during Shire Horse experiences, is my home for the night. It is such a beautiful day here on Coldcroft Farm. Morning. favorite thing that I like doing is having them in harness, um, having a couple of them um, pulling uh, a, a small carriage or a cart and just myself, the horses and the dog out on the open road and just going along at Shire horse pace. I'm catching a ride into the historic market town of Newent, where it will be time for me to head out to my next breed. This crew is no stranger to the open road. In 2021, Jamie, Willem, Millie, and Boo Boo drove over 600 miles to Scotland on a charity drive in memory of Jamie's brother, John. I'm always amazed at the incredible people and horses I get to meet because of the quest. Willem and Millie are two representatives of an endangered breed that has contributed so much throughout our history. The echoes of their hooves on our drive into town is something that I will always cherish. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Thank you. Our next stop is Scotland to meet one of the most recognizable draft breeds, the Clydesdale. Tucked away in southwest Scotland, about an hour from Glasgow, there's a special place that offers visitors a chance to immerse themselves in the experience of getting to know this majestic breed. Oh, this is just such a beautiful place that you have here. Thank you. Have you lived in this area for long? I have. I've been here all my days. Oh, cool. I was born and bred here. So I have. It was a dairy farm years ago and a sheep farm and it's been all sorts of things. Awesome. So I've, but I've always been around about horses, so... I wasn't expecting to have as many horses as what I've got. I've 30 <laughs> of them there. I mean, a hundred acres altogether. Oh, wonderful. This is Jack. Oh, hi, Jack. Now, he's just, he's just turned a year. 
It's just a year old and a month. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. He's huge. He is. He's actually quite big for his size. Wow. Right. And this now, his his mother's here and his father's here. Oh, cool. Right. <laughs> right this is George. Hello, right. George. Oh. How tall is he? Uh, he's just on 18. Wow. That is one beautiful horse right there. He's a broad boy, isn't he? Oh my gosh. You're quite a good rider, aren't you? But if you want, we'll organise you with him, man. That'd be Have great. Right, this is Millie Mischief. Hello. Are you mischievous? Right, this is Lucky. And he's a very quiet boy. This is Clyde. And next door's Abe. Now that's his best friend. Oh, Clyde and Abe. Clyde and Abe. Wow. They're just so big. He's a big boy. <laughs> All right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Talk about dinner plate size hooves here. I mean, their hooves are literally larger than my hand. I like the, uh, the like, Clydesdale sized head hole ah, that is, is here. It's, it's, it's nice for them. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't bump their heads when right. they back out. We go to made for it's yeah. special to, to suit the horses. Sure. So when they're all out in a field together, how hard is it to tell all of them apart? Oh, it's dead easy. You know every one of them. Oh, good. <laughs> it's, like, it's like ten humans been out in the field. You know who you, you know who's who. You know who's who. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's, it. it's no problem. Aww. Now the only time you have a problem is actually if it, for a distance. Right, uh, well, the, the sisters look very alike. Now, she, she's related to the Millie Mischief. Yep. Right, now, they're half sisters. Now, see if you look at them there, look at the bottom one and look at this one, the face markings are very, very alike. Very similar. Very similar. Yep. Right, <laughs> so if you're looking up the field and me getting a wee bit older, you just don't pick it which way. Especially if one's in one corner and one's in one's the other, in the other corner. corner. Now, this is Alfie. They just keep getting bigger. You're all so sweet. Go on. Their average height is between 17 and 18 hands. For reference, 18 hands is six feet tall at the withers. They are most commonly bay and brown with white markings, but can also be black, roan, and chestnut. So you have, you have a pretty great breeding program. Yep, yep, we have quite a few. I try and breed and keep. Yeah. If possible. Yeah. Well, and you have a great way of using them. Well, we need to, we had to incorporate that into try and keep them. <laughs> but maybe you can keep that amount of horses and uh, no day something with them, but that was, that was my reason. Right. You're not a Clydesdale. No, 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 he's definitely not. He's definitely not. And I've known them since they were foals. So you can what it's like, you can what it's going to do. Yep. You know, it's all its attributes. And to be able to have the different horses for the different people uh, as well. It like, is, that's really it nice. is, it is. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yes, he's a big tall boy. He's a big boy. And he does, he's one of the only ones, he's got a lovely big mane to, he keeps his mane, you know what I mean? He never rubs it up. Yeah. This place is just magical. <laughs> <laughs> That's Eddie there. Now Eddie, he's, he's a big, he's a tall horse, right? Mm -hmm. And he'll be coming, he'll be four, four this year. Okay. Right, he's a slow developer. Right, so we broke him in last year. We'll not really use him to maybe next year or the year after. Okay. Because it's just, it's no, it's not big enough yet. Yeah. He needs to fill out and muscle up a wee bit. One of the things I really love about these big draft breeds is just their calm, gentle personalities. You know, they are so big, but they're also so quiet and fun to be around. Gentle giants. That's it, I'm ready for my nap now. Oh, good man.
Oh my gosh, he's so sweet. <laughs> hey, hey, she's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, you were talking earlier about knowing them from foals and, and learning their personalities, and you can tell how much he trusts you. You know, we're walking in here as strangers, and he just recognizes like it's a safe position and he doesn't have to worry. And that's saying a lot for what you do with your horses. That is a cheeky thing. <laughs> I'm beginning to see this. Yeah, I'm <laughs> um, nothing at all. Nope. Are you checking? Are you sure? You sure? Bottom pocket, top pocket. Bottom pocket, top <laughs> pocket. Checked. I'm nothing. See? <laughs> Good boy. There's always a chance, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just bring Sonny out. There are just big horses everywhere here. It's so cool. This is officially the like largest mounting block know, I've ever seen. <laughs> All right, Clydesdale time. Such a pretty view from up here. He's a lovely boy, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's, he's a photogenic big boy. He just has this presence about him. <laughs> There's something so amazing about being on these big draft horses. The Clydesdale breed dates back to the middle of the 18th century. Historically, they were used for heavy farm and industrial work. Today, they are still used for driving, but are also becoming quite popular as riding horses.
I just want to hang out with draft horses all day. <laughs> Luckily, our next stop is Belgium to meet the Belgian. A small country in northwestern Europe is home to a large horse that has become a beloved breed around the world. The Royal Society of the Belgian Draft Horse invited me out to learn about the breed and to go for a ride in a place that is known as the Cradle of the Belgian Draft Horse. This is Noel with one of his stallions. Generations back, his family played an important role in the creation of the breed. So this is in your blood, these horses. <laughs> it's pretty every direction you look. Belgians are one of the strongest horse breeds in the world. Their breeding started back in the beginning of the 17th century, and the stud book was established in 1886. Average height is between 16 to 17 hands, and an adult can weigh over 2,000 pounds. They have been exported all around the world and they have influenced several other heavy breeds over the centuries. This is Yopa. His owners, Eric and Marlene, brought him to the farm today for me to ride. That's a lot of hoof right there. He's uh, 11 years old. He goes on the saddle in the carriage. It's amazing to be here the beautiful countryside of Belgium, where the Belgian draft horse breed originated. You can just look across the area over here and imagine, you know, seeing draft horses out here hundreds of years ago. There are so many different examples of Belgian colors out here. It's so neat to see all of the different colors that they have. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many breeds I ride, I always get so excited each time I get the opportunity to get on another horse like riding a couch. <laughs> there's, there's so much horse to sit on too, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so comfy. There are some beautiful places to explore in Belgium, but for a horse lover, there is an event that is not to be missed. It's on the west coast of Belgium in a small fishing town. We're heading out to meet the shrimp fishermen here in the west coast of Belgium. This is Dominic. He learned how to be a shrimp fisherman from his father. This is my first time shrimping with horses. It's actually my first time shrimping, so it's, it's, it's a plus with horses. <laughs> oh good, perfect, your first time as well. The fishermen all live within an hour drive of the sea. That is a well-trained horse right there. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's only one ring that's attached. He's using a combination of voice cues and also a different technique that he uses with the reins to tell him left well, and right. It goes well. Eh? It goes well. I'm so yeah. impressed. <laughs> because you cannot pull one side, it's so you can understand. Oh, look at all the people.
What they don't realize is that they have just started a lifelong obsession for horses. Shrimp fishing on horseback dates back to the 1500s. Today, this is the only place in the world where the tradition lives on. Everyone is here to see the shrimping on horseback, and it's just incredible to feel the energy of everyone heading out to the beach. There was a time in the 70s where there were only two fishermen left. In 2013, it was put on the UNESCO's World Heritage List. It takes two years of training to be officially recognized as a shrimp fisher on horseback. This is a tradition that has been going on for centuries. I love to see all around the world how horses are used for different purposes. I'm catching a ride to another farm where it's time to see how they cook the shrimp. At this moment, we have 15 fishermen and 10 for workmen. I think I am the oldest at this moment. I'm 62. Uh, all the oldest young one. Okay. So you're the wisest. Oh, don't know. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> My wife said no. <laughs> We need 100% screams. You're much faster at this than I am. that the horse is pulled I know, huh? to, to dry out the yeah. shrimp. This is just so cool. Oh my gosh. That's officially the best shrimp I have ever tasted. There's a caviar of the North Sea. It is so good. Wow. <laughs> It's time to head back to the ocean for the next portion of this adventure. 
I'm here with Luke and his Belgian draft horses, and it's time to head out to the beach on Elsa. She's an eight-year-old Belgian draft horse mare. How long have you been breeding Belgians? Uh, 10 years. Wow. Uh, I always uh, said from my 20 already, when I'm 50, I started breeding Belgian uh, draft horses and yeah. I started to. Good for you. Started like, at 50. I like them very much because I, I, they have the same character as me. <laughs> it's uh, easy, slowly, uh, working hard. Uh, yeah. I love it. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. You can feel her brakes when the wave comes. I've never felt a horse this aware of the sea before. These horses can do so much and most people think of them as, as work horses, as farm horses. They are also just Brilliant horses to ride! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> These heavy horses have powered society into the modern age, and they continue to take on new roles that lift up, carry, and inspire those who spend time with them. <laughs>